what I'm going to present is basically how we now have power. An understanding that we have real power. And like I said earlier this morning, is that we haven't been able to exercise that power because a lot of us don't know about it. Yeah? Our people don't know how to apply this power that we have. And so I hope that by giving this presentation here, it gives you the basis on how we have that power. And it gives you a legal basis, so a legal foundation within their system that they have to recognise. They can't avoid it anymore. They can't avoid it. They must stare it in the face. And we have to learn how to make them stare it in the face and show them that we do have the power. So, our law is the law of the land. Now, my first diplomatic mission with a little fellow called Fred Hooper, we were invited to Fiji to meet with the Prime Minister of Fiji. This is about uh, four years ago. When we got to Fiji, we were sitting in the, in the office having these discussions. And then as we left, he said to us, and talk about Fiji, isn't it marvellous? Here they are, the, the delegation of Fijians. Thank you. Okay. So, um, he says to us, as we stand up to leave, because that lady there, Oni, may you stand, Oni was the one who facilitated this first meeting with Fred and I, with their office. Thank you. So, when we were leaving, the guy said to us, he said, um, when you go home, he said, when you come back here, it won't be through a private introduction. It'll be formally through diplomatic channels. So that's coming through proper diplomatic channels. But he threw, he threw a burden of proof on my shoulder. And he said, go home and determine the law of the land. Because when you know the law of the land, that's who has power. So, that stayed with me. So we go to the next one. So I'm going to start rolling out and show you who and how we have and are the law of the land, this land. Here. This is good because I'm, I've started using these depictions because they're very important for us. Yeah? Here, a black fellow is resisting Cook and his mob. Yeah? Next one. We're just going to roll these through. There's another one. Resistance. They were not welcome on our shores. They were never welcome. Next one. So here, the people in uniform. Because you see, under the Western system, they recognise uniforms as an official war, as official resistance. They recognise uniform, people in uniform. The reason I put this picture here is because they are in uniform with their paint. Yeah, next one. Here, people coming into open land. Our people resisted. These are these white people drawing pictures of the resistance, not realising that they're recording Aboriginal resistance, not realising the significance of these drawings. Next one. Again, that could be any river in Australia. I say that's the bar one in my mob. Yeah? My mob. Next one. Now, there's a video that I want you to see and I'll explain this video after we play it. Oh, who goes there? HMAS Bathurst, exercising its freedom of entry to the city of Bathurst, with swords drawn, colours playing, band playing, drums beating and colours flying. Breath to the right and privilege. Yes, sir. Your right and privilege to do so is acknowledged. Pass HMAS Bathurst with the acknowledgement of the Mayor, the Councillors and the citizens of the City of Bathurst. Yes, sir. Right. Parade will advance in the column of roofs by the centre. Quick! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Now, on February 7, 1788, a more elaborate ceremony was carried out. This is Philip, yeah, coming onto the shores at Sydney Cove, what is now called Circular Quay in Sydney. This is what happened. See that uh, what they just did? They came off a boat and they were coming into people's country armed. And the formality is that you have to get permission to come onto country. You have to get permission. That is the law of all sea and land in Western system. Now, this is what they did. 1788, a more elaborate ceremony was carried out. The convicts and marines assembled in a clearing near Sydney. Co, the governor and his chief officials, marched to the centre of a clearing to the strain of music from the maritime band. Philip's commission was read out. The Act of Parliament and the First Charter of Justice, which created the first courts, were broadcast to the convicts and their jailers. This second ceremony, like the first, was an assertion of independent British authority over New South Wales. Now, what they did, there were no blackfellas, because the blackfellas were throwing spears at them. So what did they do? They sent a boatload of convicts and marines into the bush to greet them on our country. And then they got off the boats and they got permission to come onto country by their prisoners. And then they asserted British sovereignty over Australia. That's how they did it. An illegal act. So when we say that they came here and they occupied this country illegally, that's how it's illegal. That's exactly how it's illegal. Because they did not get permission. Just as you saw there, the formalities of those mariners coming off their ship to come into Bathurst, because the ship was named after the city, they had to get permission to bear arms and bring their colours, their flags, onto that land. But you see, they were asking a policeman. Not Ellie asked them when she videoed that, where's the Wiradjuri people? Right? They couldn't afford, they never got the Wiradjuri people to receive them. It wasn't the policeman who should have received them, it should have been the Aboriginal people, the Wiradjuri people. As they were by no means devoid of legal capacity and had laws and usages of their own. Treaties should be made with them Colonialists were uninvited intruders, the Aborigines, the native sovereigns of the soil. Amen. In a case called Bon John, where a black fellow said, I am not subject to your laws. Now, next one in. Here, come 1875, a lady by the name of Queen Victoria. After and I looked at all the, all the correlating evidence and all the paperwork and following the paper trail in England, the Fijian chiefs surrendered their land by session for 99 years to Queen Victoria. After that, the Queen respected the honesty and integrity of the chiefs of Fiji. And as a consequence, she put this here order in council in place and it was written into an act of 1875 that Dennis alluded to earlier. But you see, when you read this act, I'll, I will go through it later. When you read this, this is what Queen, this is an order in council by Queen Victoria. Nothing herein or any such order in council contained shall extend or be construed to invest Her Majesty, her heirs or successors, which is que currently Queen Elizabeth, with any claim or title whatsoever to dominion or sovereignty over any such islands or places as aforesaid or to derogate from the rights of the tribes or people inhabiting such islands or places or of chiefs or rulers thereof to such sovereignty or dominion and a copy of every order, every such order in council shall be laid before each house of parliament within 30 days after the issue thereof unless the parliament shall not be in session in which case a copy shall be laid before each House of Parliament within 30 days after the commencement of the next ensuing session. Now, in New South Wales in 1875, they had a legislature. But you see, this here, Section 10, said that they had to gazette it. They had to make it notice. Because it had to become law on the land that it intended. 
on Wednesday last, this week, I had a little bit of time. And I've been trying to prove that this law became law in New South Wales. I had to prove that. And the only way that could become law in New South Wales is that it had to be proclaimed in the state of New South Wales. Wednesday, I go into the parliamentary archives in Sydney, where mo, I find this document. This year, the, that Pipper Act, 1872 and 1875, were proclaimed by Sir, Sir Hercules Robinson on the 24th of November, 1875. And this is what it says. Um, good Lord. Um, proclamation by the Excellency Sir Hercules George something. I've got to get that paper. Where is it? Here. Now we're getting down to the tin tax. We're talking about Aboriginal sovereignty. And by talking about Aboriginal sovereignty, we need always to make sure of our positions. Okay, Ellie Gilbert, what do you do with it? There it is. Good one. Thank you. Heavens. <coughs> um, by Hercules George Robert Robinson, Knight Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Governor, Commander in Chief of the Colony of New South Wales and as dependencies and Vice Admiral of the same. Whereas by an act of the Imperial Parliament, Great Britain and Ireland, passed in the 30 88th and 39th years of the reign of Her Majesty entitled an act to amend the act of the session of the 35th and 36th years of the reign of Her present Majesty chapter 19 entitled an act for the prevention and punishment of criminal outrages upon natives of the islands of the Pacific Ocean. Every copy of which is hereunto subjoined. It is, so what that means is that they've attached the act, yeah, this act, to this proclamation. It is provided that the said recited act shall be proclaimed in each Australian colony by the Queen, by the Governor thereof, within six weeks after a copy of such act shall have been re uh, received by each Governor and shall take effect in the said colony from the day of such proclamation. And whereas such recited act was received by me, the governor aforesaid, in the 14th day of November, in the first instance. Now, therefore, I, Sir Hercules George Robert Robinson, the governor aforesaid, do hereby, with the advice of the Executive Council, declare that the said recited act shall take effect from the date thereof given under my hand and the seal of the colony, Government Hour, Sydney, this 32nd day of November, in the year of our Lord, 1875, and in the 39th year of Her Majesty's reign, by Commander George Hercules Robinson, God save the Queen. Hi. Now, that 1875 Pacific Island, as he says there, gives us all the power we need, because it is law. And it was proclaimed in the state of New South Wales. They have no sovereign power over us Aboriginal people, none. And that there bars it, because it was proclaimed in the state of New South Wales. How big was New South Wales at that time? New South Wales at that time was New South Wales, because in 1859 they'd already given, 1856 they'd given Queensland away, they'd given Victoria away, South Australia away, and West Australia away. However, but as he says here, yeah, they had to proclaim it. If those states, other states, did not proclaim it and there's not a document like that in those states, those states committed treason against Queen Victoria and the current Queen. Plus all the Crown employees no. yeah. so, are, are committing treason yeah. against the Australian people by flying over the foreign power. So that, yeah, we'll deal with that now. So that is the proof that this law is now in place, and it continues to be in place, and I'll show you how. Next one. In. Oh, keep going. Saving the rights of the tribe. So when he proclaimed that document, this is, this is part of what was 
um, attached to that proclamation. That's what was proclaimed, right? And it's what I read to you before. And that's, the, that's section 10. Now, it was an order. Part of that Queen Victoria's order in council was that it be proclaimed. Now, let me tell you about orders in council. While I, when I was in London, I needed to find out exactly what does this mean? Yeah? What does an order in council mean? An order in council is a crown or a king or a queen who has who's all the governments rule in the name of, they have a prerogative power over the parliament and they can exercise that prerogative power any time they want to. And in this particular case, Queen Victoria, after the session, she wanted, and this is what I found out from um, my journeys into England, the Queen understood that the Fijian people had ceded their land to them for 99 years, but she was making sure that everybody understood that she did not claim sovereignty and dominion over them. They remained independent with their own power and law. They never took it off us, never. And it was thanks to the Fijian people who ceded that land because she respected their tribal chiefs for doing it. And she was making sure that their people are not going to exercise authority over those people. And that applied to us here in Australia as well. Because in the Act, we go to the next one, in, in, the, in the Act, it says that you, that in the 1872 Act, when you read what Hercules Robinson did, those two Acts, there was not an amendment. There was just another Act that was included and it came after the session of Fiji. Yeah? And so what they did, she made sure that the, that the people, the natives, were protected. Their rights were protected. The tribes. The tribes. And she made sure that they were, including their rulers and chiefs, she did not assume power and control over them at all. And that's what the order in council is. Now, the order in council, as it was explained to me by British lawyers in London, when an order in council is made by a sovereign, that becomes absolute law. The parliament cannot change that law. The parliament cannot change a law that is an order in council by the reigning monarch who made that law. Now, <coughs> let me, I'll deal with that further in how that works. Here, 1986, when, John, uh, when Bob Hawke, Michael Levice, the Attorney General, and Gareth Evans, the Foreign Minister, went to London in 1986, they wanted England to, to take away, or they wanted England to stop making laws for Australia. Because England still at that time could pass laws in the English Parliament and overturn anything that they do in Australia. They still had the power to do that. Yeah. So in 1986, these three fellows went there without the approval of the Australian people and they went over there and they negotiated with the Parliament of England to introduce this act called the Australia Act 1986. And when you read the Australia Act, the Australia Act actually violates certain sections of the existing Australian Constitution and assumes certain things that they don't have a legal right to do because only the people of Australia can do that. And in fact, Kirby made a reference to that in several, in several respects saying that that 1986 act is questionable in relation to where it violates those laws that exist in Australia. Now, so when you look at this, this Statute Repeals Act, this is relating to the 1875, what was left of the 1875 Aboriginal uh, Pacific Island Protection Act. And this is what it says. An act to promote the reform of the legislative law by the repeal in accordance with the recommendation of the Law Commission and Scottish Law Commission of certain enactments which, and here's where Australia are in fact caught, except in so far as their effect is preserved. So, what that means is that the law that was established by those orders in council remains in force. And then it goes on to say, are no longer practical effect and to make other provisions in connection 
with the repeal of those enactments. Now, part of the problem under Halsbury Law and the rule of England and the rule of law in relation to legislature in the parliament, no parliament anywhere in the world, once they make a law, can take it off their statutes. They can't. They can only upgrade it. They can amend it. They can do certain things. Now, there's another part to this, and I'm going to blame Millie for this. I have to blame someone. There's another part to it. And what it says about this year, the laws that were created, it says that where an order in council establishes a law, right, the current reigning monarch is the only one who can take away the law that was crea created, the effect of the law that was created by that statute. So that means the Queen of England now is the only one who can take away the law that it created where they did not claim sovereignty and dominion over Aboriginal people in the islands and also on the Brit what, what are British, um, so British, British territories and in, in respect of Australia in relation to every state in this country. So Queen Elizabeth has to introduce a, um, an order in council to take away the law that was established that grants us and recognises our sovereignty and that Britain, the Crown of Britain, never ever claimed sovereignty or dominion over us and our places. So that's our land. So Queen Elizabeth cannot, she did not do that and she will not do that. 